Judy. Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Oh, more people. I, I just opened up the room so people are starting to enter. Um, I'm going to turn off that waiting room so that they can just join. Okay, everyone, we're going to go ahead and get started in just a few moments, letting a, a few more people trickle in. Those of you that just entered, welcome. We're, we're going to go ahead and get started in just about a minute or so, um, just letting a few more folks log in. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Fox. I am a career coach with W.P. Carey School of Business. I work with the undergrads. I wanna thank you all for joining us today and welcome to the International Student Career Development Summer Series. This week we're delivering 23 career and professional development sessions virtually. Um, they're specifically targeted for our international students and alumni. You can find the full lineup of sessions and event descriptions. Um, I'll go ahead and pop the link for that into the chat feature. Um, if you're unable to attend a session that looks interesting to you, please don't worry. We will be offering the series two more times throughout the summer, again in June and July. Um, before we get started, I just want to go over a few housekeeping items. Um, this session is being recorded, so a link will also be sent to you and all participants within the next week. Um, all participants have been muted, um, so please use the chat function to type in any questions or comments. Um, feel free to type in your questions at any point during the presentation. We will circle back and answer those questions at the end of the presentation. Um, now I'd like to introduce our presenter. Um, our presenter today is Kelsey Watt. She is a career coach with W.P. Carey School of Business. Um, and she will be presenting on informational interviews today. Awesome, thank you so much, Jennifer. Um, really excited to talk about the topic of informational interviews. Um, as you may be familiar, uh, networking is a really big part of the US job search. And informational interviews are a really great way to begin a networking process. They're also a really great way to navigate uh, career decision making, figuring out what, what you want to do, figuring out what roles and functions you might have interest in. So really excited to talk about this topic. Um, as Jennifer mentioned, please feel free to shoot all your questions into the chat. Uh, I know there's not very many of us in here, which is great. So, um, you know, the more questions, the merrier, we can um, sort of have a dialogue. So um, first thing, what is an informational interview? So an informational interview is a brief informal meeting with a professional in an industry role or function of interest. Informational interviews can take place in person, over the phone, or through video conferencing. 
So it's a meeting that you set up with a professional that does something that you are interested in or works for a company you are interested in. It is a meeting set up to gather information. Um, given our current sort of uh, global pandemic, uh, mostly these are gonna be taking place over the phone or through video conferencing, but um, you know, oftentimes we also have these meetings in person. Uh, why should you do them? So there's a few really good reasons to do informational interviews. The first is informational interviews are great to help you gain firsthand insights on industry trends and dynamics. So when you're talking to somebody, a lot of times they'll give you information about their industry, about their role, about what their company is like. That's not always found online. They'll give you some of that first hand information. What does a financial analyst at Intel do all day? What does a brand manager do for a small startup? You know, these are really great, um, the, you know, pieces of information that if you gain them firsthand, it will give you a more, more um, full picture of the role. Another great reason to do an informational interview is so that you can learn more about career pathways um, in the industry and learn more about industries, functions, and roles that you um, are interested in exploring. You can also get tips and insider knowledge through informational interviews on how to prepare for or land roles in the companies of interest. A lot of companies have sort of specific requirements um, and you can get some kind of tips on what might be the best way to format your resume what types of folks might you want to talk to when do the applications open up for certain types of roles getting having an informational interview with a professional can give you some of that insight um, and insider tips and knowledge Another thing that's really great about informational interviews and why a lot of students choose to do informational interviews is that they help you develop new relationships and sometimes those new relationships can lead towards future opportunities. So that's why we want to do informational interviews. So when you're thinking about doing an informational interview, setting up a meeting with a professional, the first thing you wanna think about is, how do I find these people? How do I source my contacts? Who do I want to talk with? So the first place I always tell students to go is your personal network. Um, this is your family, your friends, professors, former employers or former colleagues. These are great people to talk to um, or to get recommendations from for um, mutual connection. So say you want to talk to somebody who is a biologist at a national lab and your uncle knows someone. This is a great uh, way to sort of source a personal contact. So you are asking your personal network first. Another great way to source contacts, folks that you might want to talk to, is through uh, LinkedIn or the ASU Mentor Network. Um, ASU is, as you know, a huge university. There are hundreds of thousands of alumni from ASU who love talking to students. They really enjoy doing informational interviews with students um, and they're easy to access through the LinkedIn alumni feature or through the ASU mentor network. So I recommend taking a look at alumni. Um, you can also source contacts through clubs, organizations, fraternities or sororities that you're involved in and alumni from those organizations. You can also take a look at professionals on LinkedIn that maybe are not alumni, but maybe you have a um, shared interest or you're in a, in a group together on LinkedIn, something like that. You can also take a look at the book of lists. The book of lists is developed by the Phoenix Business Journal. And in the Phoenix, uh, every metropolitan area has a business journal. And in the business journal, you're able to take a look at uh, lists that are produced 
um, that are industry specific and talk about the top companies or top individuals within those firms. And that can be a really great way to source some contacts for informational interviewing. Uh, everyone has access to the Phoenix Business Journal and the Book of Lists through the library. Then when you go to connect, you want to connect strategically. So the idea here is that you want to be thoughtful um, with who you're connecting with. Source from your contacts and connect with professionals that are in roles or functions that you want to go into or you might be able to go into in the future. So this might be things like if you have interest in uh, let's say becoming a supply chain analyst, connect with a supply chain analyst at a company. You want to be thoughtful when thinking about contacting director level or executive professionals. Oftentimes we sort of spin our wheels trying to contact director level or trying to contact executive professionals without a warm contact there. So without a mutual friend introducing us. Oftentimes director level and executive professionals don't get back to us. Um, so you want to think about folks that are in roles that you could see yourself in within the next one to five years, right? Those are folks that are a good sort of starting place for contacts. Again, though, if you do have a warm contact or know someone or referred from a family friend or referred mutually in some capacity, um, you're, of course, welcome to speak with executive professionals, um, you know, but you want to be strategic about who you're connecting with. You also want to be strategic about picking folks at firms that are of interest to you. Um, the other thing that really helps with connections is connecting with folks with a shared interest um, or some shared opportunities. Those folks are more likely to have a higher rate of response. So like I mentioned on the slide, shared organizations, mutual friends, similar backgrounds, similar interests, location, that sort of thing. So that might be, um, you know, how you might consider sourcing contacts strategically. Great. Once you've identified individuals that you would like to have an informational interview with, you want to go ahead and request a meeting. You want to send a short, thoughtful email with your request. You want to be concise. Don't ask for more than 30 minutes of their time. And no, again, like I mentioned, this meeting can be in person, it can be via Zoom, it can be over the phone, um, and you might um, reach out and specify in your request what type of meeting you're requesting. Hello, I would like to get on a phone call with you for 30 minutes. I have a sample email here. So this is, this is um, you wanna tailor this up to your specific situation, but this is a sample. Hi, my name is Kelsey. I'm currently a junior studying supply chain management at Insert College. So if your college is Fulton or Sandra Day O'Connor or um, well, any of the colleges, Watts, you know, you're putting your college in there, W.P. Carey, at Arizona State University. I'm interested in pursuing a career in, this is where you want to focus on their industry. So if you are exploring multiple industries, you can put multiple industries in there, but what you don't want to do is contact somebody who is an engineer at a national laboratory and say, I'm interested in exploring cosmetology right it doesn't have any relation so you want to you want to appeal to them by you know by by talking about the industry that they're of in that they're involved in by giving them something that you know that they can really um comment on and talk to you about right um and then you say something about and you know i'm hoping to learn more about the work at your company 
this is where you put in your request. I'd love to get on the phone with you for 30 minutes to share more about, and then here's where you can sort of ask a few of your more specific questions. Is it their, do you wanna learn more about their company? Do you wanna learn about their career path? Is there something else relevant that you wanted to learn? And then thank you so much for reading this email. This is a short email. You do not want it to be too long. You do not want an extensive sort of, um, you know, you don't want your whole introduction. First I did this and then I did this. I'm qualified for all these things. You don't want that, right? There's time for that later. This is a short meeting request, courteous and professional. And this is how you want to send it. You can send this via the ASU Mentor Network. If you met them on there, you can send this via LinkedIn. If you connected with the person on there, you can also send this directly to someone's work email. Um, and sometimes that can be pretty effective. Then before the meeting, you want to confirm the meeting. 24 hours before the meeting, you just wanna write another short and sweet email. Hello, Mrs. Young, I am emailing to confirm our phone call tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. I will be calling you at the number you provided. Thank you again for taking the time to chat with me. I look forward to connecting. Short, sweet, a way to confirm. These are just samples that I'm giving you. You can use your own language, but the idea here is that they're short and professional. Now, this is the important part. Before you go into the informational interview, you want to do some preparation. So you found a contact, you have requested a meeting, they got back to you, you set up up the logistics, you've confirmed the meeting, great. Now you really want to do some research. Check out the LinkedIn page of the person that you are going to do the informational interview with. You want to know some basic things about them. Where did they go to school? What roles have they had? How long were they at those roles? Especially if you're going to ask them some questions about their career trajectory. You might ask them some questions about what it was like moving from, from one role to another. Or maybe you ask them some questions about the differences between two of the companies that they worked at, or why they chose to do a career change and what that career change might have been like. Those are really nice tailored questions to the individual. And those are the types of questions that will really make your informational interview shine. So you wanna do a LinkedIn search. You wanna do a Google search look at the person, you know, search them, search their company, go on to the company website, know a little bit about the company that they work at, what the company does, check out if there are any recent news articles on the company. That stuff is really helpful. It will help you to have some market knowledge of what's happening at that company. And then take a look at, if you really want to go deep, take a look at sites like Mergent Online or other library resources that will give you market trends and analytics and some really deep information on the company and the industry that you have interest in. So do that research. The other thing you want to prepare for is a technology check. If you are going to call the person or if you are going to do video conferencing all the standard rules apply. Make sure that you have good service. Make sure your phone works. Make sure if you're doing video conferencing, you have a professional background. Double check and prepare. Make sure you said the location, the time zone, dress. So you want to think about all of these things. This is part of your executive presence. This is part of your professional demeanor. You want to approach these, although these, you know, these meetings are informal in nature, you still want to have a professional presence when you enter the meeting. That will help you to seem credible and that will help you to build advocacy with the person that you are speaking with. So that sort of stuff is important to consider. Another thing that I have on here is coffee. If you are meeting with an individual in person, 
it is very common to meet for coffee. You don't have to drink coffee if you don't like coffee or don't choose to drink it. You can drink other drinks. You don't even have to drink a drink, but if you do set up a meeting at a coffee shop, which is a very common type of location, especially in the States to, well, and in Europe, lots of different places, it's a very common location to set up a meeting. Um, you want to be prepared, if you did request the meeting, you want to be prepared to offer to purchase coffee for the person who you are meeting with. It's a standard sort of business practice. So if you requested the meeting, you're gonna to want to offer, can I buy you a coffee? Um, it can, again, doesn't have to be coffee. I get a lot of pushback on this from students. Can it be tea? Of course, it can be tea. It can be water, it can be whatever your preference is. But the idea here is that if you meet at a coffee shop, you're purchasing a beverage for the person that you're meeting with. The other things you want to think about are tone, structure, and content. So this sort of goes without saying, but it's good to also say, um, you naturally want your tone to be warm, pleasant, gracious. That sort of, you know, that means that you have kind of an open body language, smile, your tone is happy. Um, you know, it's, that's the type of tone that you wanna have when you're in the meeting. You don't wanna do things that are monotone voice it doesn't demonstrate enthusiasm and what you really want to come off in this meeting is enthusiasm i'm excited i'm gracious that you took the meeting with me i'm curious because these are about curiosity um they're not so much necessarily about um you know I, i'm really trying to get a job this is about i'm curious i want to learn more then structure. You want to think about how the meeting is going to be structured. You requested the meeting, so you're leading the meeting. You want to structure it with small talk, then you want to have question and answer time, and then some next steps. And I'll go more into the structure in a second. And then the content. Relevant, brief, tailored. So the idea here is the things that you're talking about are relevant to the person and their industry, brief because you only have 30 minutes sometimes even less and then tailored you don't want to ask questions that are too broad or too general you want to think about your audience and tailor questions to them and then i have a little tip here on body language again like i mentioned this body language this is what will help you to come off as warm pleasant gracious confident this is, a lot of this has to do with body language. Smile, have an open posture. So when I say open posture, I mean, you can see me. You don't want to be down like this. You don't want your, you don't want your arms crossed like this. You want to be open, shoulders squared, that type of thing. That body language, it goes a long way in helping you demonstrate your confidence, helping you demonstrate warmth, um, helping you demonstrate your professionalism. And then if you are in person, a, you know, and perhaps outside of COVID, um, a appropriate handshake. These are the little things, but they go a very long way. So you wanna start the meeting with what is called small talk. Um, small talk is basically polite conversation about unimportant and uncontroversial things, right? So questions like, how are you today? How has your day been? A comment about the weather. The weather is really great today. Or, oh my goodness, it's so hot today, isn't it? Right? Did you have a nice weekend? Or do you have any fun plans over the weekend? These are some basic questions that you can ask in the beginning of the meeting to just soften and ease into the meeting. How are you today is probably one of the most common questions you get asked in small talk. How are you today? You want to, if you get asked that question, you want to go into a little bit of description. This is how you fuel the small talk. So you don't, if they say, how are you today? You don't want to say, good. 
you can give a little bit more detail. How are you today? Great, I've had a wonderful day. One of the things that was so great is that I got to, whatever you did, I don't know, I got to take a really nice walk outside. It was so pleasant. That's it. Again, this is polite conversation. It's unimportant. You're not going into anything controversial, but this is the type of stuff that starts the meeting. Hopefully, you'll see that small talk tends to kind of taper off. You start small talk, and then it's like you kind of have gone through some of these questions. The idea here is because you're managing the meeting, and this takes practice to do, but the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. You're managing the meeting, and you'll notice that it's time to transition out of small talk. We already talked about the weather. I already asked them how they are. They asked me how I am. Great, let's get to the point of this meeting. This is where you take the lead and you want to set the foundation for the meeting. Because you're leading the meeting, you're setting this foundation and saying something like, it's a one sentence thing that you're saying to set the agenda. Thank you so much for taking this meeting with me. As I mentioned in my message, I was hoping that you might be able to answer a few questions I have on career pathways in, I just put asset management, you fill in the blank there. Career pathways in whatever, in psychology, right? Whatever you're interested in. That, just that one sentence, it sets the runway here for the rest of the conversation. And this transitions now into questions and answers. So you want to develop some questions. Please prepare your questions beforehand. There's a really interesting framework that might be helpful that I'm gonna run through. It's called, it stands, it's called Tiara. You probably don't need to know that. That's like an idiom, US idiom. You don't need to know that. But trends, insights, advice, resources, assignments. That's the T-I-A-R-A. -A. The first types of questions you want to ask are questions, I'm going to go back, are questions that are on trends and insights. These are questions that are, they won't come off as too strong when you start asking questions. They are what a lot of people like to call, this is another idiom, shock talk. But what this is, is you're talking about the industry and you're asking about trends. Things like what trends are most impacting your business right now? What surprises you most about your job? These are questions that are easy for the interviewer to ask. They're not overly personal. Then after you ask one or two questions and trends and insights, you want to transition into advice types of questions. These are questions that are more specifically about advice that that person has for you. What can I do right now to best prepare for a career in this field? Great. Then you might ask some questions that are resource questions. This is what I call the pivot question in, in the conversation. You're shifting away from trends and from some advice they have, and now you're transitioning the question, you're transitioning the questions into things that are more applicable and that will relate to next steps. What resources should I be looking at next? Are there additional contacts that you think would be useful for me to speak to? These are really great questions you want to pay attention to the answers to these questions because they will come in handy when you try to follow up with the person later on. And then any assignments. What projects are most common and important in your work? What types of projects have interns worked on in the past? That type of thing. Now, you might think, I can't get through trends, insights, advice, resources, and assignments, and small talk, and next steps in a 30 minute meeting. That is okay. This is a framework. It is not the only way to do an informational interview. This is essentially to help guide you and give you structure to the informational interview. If you develop an organic conversation, Follow that conversation. It is okay if you don't get to insights or it's okay if you don't get to assignments. Those things are okay. This is a framework to follow, but you do not have to follow it exactly. Then you're gonna follow up after this, uh, the informational interview has closed or ended. 
with a thank you. A tip about um, the ending. Once you've hit, if you agreed to 15 minutes, 30 minutes, that type of thing, once you have hit 15 minutes or 30 minutes, whatever you agreed, the time frame you agreed to, you want to be conscious of the time. And you want to say something like, I've noticed that we're at about 30 minutes right now. I want to be conscious of the time. That's all you have to say, a phrase like that. The person should then let you know if they need to go or if they, um, if they have more time to talk. So it's just a nice way to demonstrate your professionalism and that you're keeping good time for them. Um, the other thing you want to do at the end, of course, is thank the person. Thank you again so much for taking this call. It was very informative. Then, once you get off the phone or get out of the meeting, send a thank you note within 24 hours of meeting the person. Summarize any assignments or resources they gave you, right? If they told you, it would be, you know, one thing that would be really great is for you to listen to this podcast. I have a little, you know, thing on the slide I wrote. Thank you for recommending I check out the end. NPR money podcast. I can't wait to get started listening to it, right? That's you remembering what they told you and you confirming that you're going to do it. If they mentioned, I would love to connect you to my friend Jennifer who works at this company and they didn't give you the contact during the meeting, you might say, thank you again so much for offering to connect me to Jennifer. I look forward to hearing or to get to get it either to getting her contact information or I look forward to connecting with her soon. Put it put it back in their court so that they will make the connection for you. Hopefully that makes sense. Here's the idea with informational interviews over time. You want to be able to gain advocacy. You want to think about how do I think, how do I gain awareness and then move over time to consideration and then to acknowledgement and then to support? So as you are moving in relationship with somebody, you just want them to know who you are. So that's, you know, I'm sending them the message. Then consideration, they're going to consider, you know, they're going to consider, um, having a meeting with you, acknowledgement, that's when they've had the meeting with you, they acknowledge who you are, and then support. This is transitioning that relationship into a relationship where they may be able to support you in the future. Informational interviews are not at their core about getting a job. They are at their core about gaining information, right? Informational interview. So you don't want to approach them like, oh, I, you know, I've got to connect with a bunch of people at Intel, my dream company, because I need, you know, I, I've got to ask, I've got to get somebody to get me a job there. You don't want to approach it that way. But if you do meet or build a relationship with somebody at Intel, you demonstrate your skills, you will move from a awareness into this acknowledgement and support and the idea is that hopefully if you apply it in tell when you apply it in tell you can send a message to this person who you've connected with a couple times and you can say hey jay i wanted to let you know that i recently applied to this role at intel and the idea is that hopefully, if you, if you have built the relationship, Jay might be able to advocate for you in the future. But you're not asking, when you go into these, you're not asking Jay for a job. And you're not asking him to directly advocate for you. The hope is that you're just building a relationship with him so that potentially in the future, he may advocate for you. So that is where the informational interviewing and networking have a strong crossover with each other. Informational interviewing does help you connect with new professionals in areas of interest. As a student, 
you're very lucky because people love taking informational interviews with students and you can leverage that as a student you get to be really curious as a student. You get to say, hey, I'm a student. I would love to learn more. I'm exploring. I don't have a lot of skills. Even as an international student, you can you know, use that. I'm an international student. I'm really curious about you know, these different roles. I would love to learn more. The networking piece here is very important, especially in a market that is having some constriction where there's where there's a lot of great candidates and not as many jobs right what will really help is having an advocate at the companies of interest for you so that's this is the idea here is that over time you can develop that advocate that's why when they give you a resource when they give you an assignment during the informational interview that's a really great natural point to touch back on right so maybe they told you to listen to the podcast you thank them and then a couple weeks later a month later maybe you email them again and you say thank you so much for recommending that podcast i just listened to episode five and i learned about whatever you learned about right you're following back up with the person shows initiative shows your follow through shows your professionalism that will help build you to move from awareness up to support hopefully that makes a lot of sense um so let me make sure oh, this is my last slide um i would love to chat i know i think one question came through in the chat yes we had one question um great question about um how to come across confidence. So do you have any specific tips about how to portray that confidence? Yeah, that's such a good question. I love that question. Um, it is, sometimes it can be hard to come across as confident. Um, a few things, in, especially in this setting, that will help you to come across as confident are going to be doing the research. You don't have to be, um, you do caveat you don't have to know everything at all you don't have to know barely anything especially as a student most professionals are not looking for you to know anything they're just looking for you to be kind and curious so hopefully if you know i'm a kind person i'm a curious person those things should give you confidence but building confidence is it's a, a lot of building confidence is about a personal process of you know putting yourself in situations that will build and help you to believe in yourself um but if you do the research if you walk into these meetings prepared the idea hopefully is that you will be able to have some of this confidence um it is not easy to build i know a lot of international students also have told me that you know they have concerns about doing informational interviews because of language barriers and that is a valid concern that maybe makes you feel like i don't have the ability to get on the phone and have a great conversation um you do have the ability to do it and you also have lots of opportunities to practice so another great thing practice practicing can really help you build your confidence as well so if you're not prepared to do one of these informational interviews yet consider working with your career advisor or your career coach to practice um, your career advisor or career coach would love to sit down with you and do a mock one of these do five of them do 10 of them so that you feel confident you've gotten you know you've gotten your practice in and you know how to approach these so do know that there's lots of opportunities for you to be able to do that um that practice work to help you build the confidence over time hopefully that answers that question are there any other questions that you guys have about informational interviewing Again, if you are having trouble finding the chat feature, if you just go down to the bottom of your screen, 
you'll see a little word bubble um, and it says chat. So we'll give it a few more minutes for any final questions. Okay, well, then we would like to thank you once again for attending this session today. Uh, we will follow up uh, again with that link to the recording if you'd like to watch this again or if you missed any part and you'd like to review it. Um, and you will also be receiving a quick survey from us after the series is over. We would really appreciate your feedback that will help us improve for the uh, sum summer sessions later this summer. Um, and then don't forget to check out the other sessions that are a part of the series. Um, again, I dropped that link in the chat, but just so that it's right on top for everybody, um, I will send it again. Um, you can see all of the series that are going on um, over the next couple days. Uh, Kelsey did talk about um, trends in the market. There are some great sessions this afternoon on different markets and information about those trends going on across the industries. So I'd really encourage you to, to check those out and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you again to Kelsey uh, and thanks for everyone for coming.